IP Address Management, or IPAM, is a way that we can manage network policy services, DNS, and DHCP all from a single console. The first thing I need to do is to pick a member server, not a domain controller, to install the IPAM feature. I'm in Server Manager on a Windows 2022 server, and I'm just going to scroll through the add roles and features until I get to features. And here I'll choose the IP address management server option that you see here. When prompted, go ahead and choose to add the features that go along with it. I'm going to click Next and then Install. Installation usually just takes a couple of minutes. It's also going to add some additional PowerShell commandlet options that I'll be running here as soon as this installation is done. And that commandlet that I'm going to be running will add three new group policy objects into Active Directory. And those group policy objects will be needed in order for IPAM to work properly. Installation is complete, and now it's time to go into PowerShell. I'm going to choose the admin PowerShell so I have all the different rights that I might need in order to perform these changes. So I'm going to clear the screen and paste in my command. My commandlet for PowerShell is going to be invoke-ipam gpo for group policy object provisioning. And that's followed by the domain name, which in my case, my Active Directory domain is called mydomain.int. After that, we have the group policy object prefix name. That's going to be the start of the name of all three of my new group policies. They're going to be called IPAM1. And that's followed by the server fully qualified domain name. So I'm installing this on the yt-server1.mydomain.int server. So I'll press Enter, and it's going to prompt me to press Y multiple times to create these group policy objects. So I'll just go ahead and do that for each one. And after pressing Y multiple times, I'm back at my command prompt. So I can just go ahead and minimize. And I'm going to go into Tools and Group Policy Management. And if you don't see this installed on this server, just go to your domain controller. But I went ahead and installed the tools for this ahead of time. And here I'm going to expand my domain. And now we can see those three new IPAM policies. The Network Policy Service is the first one. That's going to be what used to be called Radius Server. So Microsoft's version of that is the NPS, or Network Policy Service. After that, we have DHCP and DNS. Those are the three main sections we're going to be able to see using the IPAM console after I go ahead and configure it. So now I'm going to click on IPAM. This is something that wasn't there before in Server Manager. And you can see step one is already done. We are connected to the IPAM server. Before I do step two, I want to go back to PowerShell one more time. And I'm going to clear the screen and type in GP update slash force. So what that's going to do is it's going to enforce the three new group policy objects that I just created using that PowerShell commandlet. And now I can see that that was successfully updated. So I can go on to step two, provision the IPAM server. So this is going to be a wizard that we go through. And you have an option for the Windows internal database, which is like a SQL Express sort of installation, which is a light version, or SQL Server, if you have a SQL Server. And if you have one and you're in a very large organization, then that's a great way to go. But in smaller organizations, we can go with the Windows internal database. After pressing Next, we have a couple of options. One is manually provisioning using the group policy objects that you would manually create. But that takes a lot of time. It's much faster just to choose the IPAM group policy based option. And I'm typing in IPAM1, which is what I typed in for that commandlet in the PowerShell invoke commandlet that I typed earlier. So I'll click Next and click Apply. Usually this just takes a minute or two, and then we'll be able to go on to the next step. And the IPAM provisioning was successful, so now I can go to step three, which is going to be to configure server discovery. Now, if this fails for any reason, you can restart your server, and sometimes that will fix it. Or you can just wait a little bit longer, and it will eventually catch up. I'm going to start by clicking on Get Forest, so it's going to find the Active Directory Forest, and usually this just takes a few seconds. 
And after a refresh, we can see that it found my forest as well as my domain. So after having the forest added in, I need to add in the domain. You can see that it found the domain called Select Domains to Discover. I'll just click on Add, and you can see now that that domain is there. And of course, the boxes need to be checked for Domain Controller, DHCP, and DNS. Now under Configure Server Discovery, the domains have been selected. Now you can click on the More button here that will show you what's happening in the background. So right now you can see at the top the IPAM Server Discovery task. And the discovered servers have been completed. So I'll go ahead and click on Select or Add Servers to Manage and Verify Access. Now I'm going to choose to add the server under Tasks. And I'll type in the name of the server that I'll be using. After typing in the name of the server and clicking Verify, it went ahead and found the IP address. In this case, it's the IPv6 address, but that's fine. And after pressing the Verify button, it found my server OK and the IP address. And now I want to take a look at what types of servers I want to manage. And from the manageability status, I need to change this from unspecified to managed. So I'll click OK. And now you're going to see that this is going to go through some various different changes. You might see that red circle with the X in it. That's OK. It sometimes takes a few minutes before it becomes unblocked. You can refresh by right-clicking every minute or two until it starts to work. After a few more minutes, it added in my two domain controllers that are also running the DC role as well as DNS, and one of them's running DHCP, and the network policy service as well. But those are still showing up as being blocked. But that's okay. A few more minutes from now, they'll also be unblocked. In the meantime, I can go right in and make some changes. So I can go to where it says DNS and DHCP servers, and I'm just going to choose my DC1. And at the bottom, you can see the server properties. It shows the IP address information, the number of zones, domain information, things like that. If I click on DNS zones, it shows the two active DNS zones that are currently in my domain controller. And I can even go over to DNS zones, and it will select those zones. And I can right-click and choose to add a DNS resource record just as I could do if I was in DNS itself. So I'm going to click on New. I'm going to choose the type of record. I'll just choose an A record, for example. And I'll just call this Test123. And it appends the domain name to it, which is fine. And now I need to give it an IP address. I'm just going to give it a fake IP address. And I don't need to create a PTR or reverse record or make any other changes. So I'll click on Add Resource Record and click OK. The advantage to using IPAM is I can go ahead and manage all the different DNS and DHCP and network policy servers all from one location. Let's see if that worked. I'm going to go to Tools and then DNS. And from DNS, I'm going to expand the domain name. Go to the Forward Lookup Zones. And you can see that I'm on my DC1, which is the one where I made the change. And I'm going to click on mydomain.int, and there is test123. So I can make that change to any DNS server, any DHCP server, and any network policy server in my network, all from this one IPAM location.